welcome to New York. It's been wet and fun. Welcome to New York. Welcome to New York. Thanksgiving, affectionately known as Turkey Day. We're driving to New York and we cut through Canada because, well, it's faster and the Tim Horton sizes are smaller. What are we doing? The kids are watching movies on the iPads. I'm driving, we're having deep philosophical conversations. Little known fun fact about me, my favorite holiday is Black Friday. Although I don't actually do much of any Black Friday shopping, I just love Black Friday. The frenetic energy, the excitement around Black Friday. Ooh, this is heavy. Can, Can I set this down for a minute? <laughs> the Renats. <laughs> You're not gonna make it. Sweating. <laughs> That's called noise. All right, we gotta take a break. Welcome, Center. What are you doing? How have we made this trip so many times without there being a formal welcome center? The Western New York Welcome Center. I would actually like to go check that out. So what you're about to see is, you've been with us on a couple of the five minute Disrupt HR um, talks, conversations, sessions, where they've been a lot of fun. And you know, the opportunity came up to present at them and it's only five minutes, your slides move automatically. Kind of freaked me out at first a little bit. Um, but I could not have understood what the preparation for those five minutes did for me in, the, in terms of my skill and ability. So I've presented probably three of these Disrupt HRs. And the five minutes of, of conversation probably had, I'd say about 150 reps, meaning I practiced it 150 times, um, which is easy to do when it's five minutes or easier to do. But how it started was I took the idea that I wanted to convey, and I knew with five minutes it could only be one idea. Everything had to support this one idea. And then I sketched it out, and then once I tried to say it together, now keep in mind, I, this is what I do, right? This should be easy. Um, so then I had to break down the outline, re-look at it. Then I dropped in some slides, because these slides auto advance. And then I practiced it, and there was no flow. Honestly, it kind of sucked. So then I got better and just kept doing the reps and the reps and the reps. Now, here's the interesting thing is that I could have never known on the front end of that project what it would have done for me overall. And I think in work so many times, there is a project or a task or something that just kind of sucks, that creeps up, that just sucks. And instead of looking at it as a negative thing, we've talked about the sugar cookie in the past, instead of looking at that thing as, oh, this is so much work. One of the other speakers at one of the events, they said, oh, it was only five minutes. I wasn't gonna put that much effort into a five minute talk. And it was kind of tough for me to hear that because I'm the type of person that typically does not want to put a ton of time into something like that, but I committed to it. And as a result of getting that five minutes down, I think 
there was an incredible, I know that there was an incredible benefit. A couple weeks ago, I had this opportunity to present in front of a group of people I've never presented to, kind of impromptu, and it was like, they're like, you only got five minutes. And I had this five minute piece. I could not have done any bit of preparation before that. If there's a message or a, a theme or something that I want to share with you, it's that when the opportunity presents itself, it is too late to prepare. And so what we have to do is sometimes take a proactive approach or take these crappy projects, these sucky teams we get put in. We have to find the way to be the best in that moment and commit ourselves to the, the best possible outcome because when the opportunity presents itself, then we are ready to step in and shine in a way that we previously could not have. So, all that to say, I guess enjoy this talk. I think it's pretty good. I laugh. I enjoy it. I like the rhythm. Got better each time I did it. Harper, Harper thinks I'm hysterical. Wait till she doesn't get dinner. We'll show her who's funny. Yeah, we're in New York. We made it. Are you watching Frozen still? Yeah. When is the last time you were actually lost? Maybe driving around a new city, walking in the woods, or looking for the burrito grande on the Cheesecake Factory menu. <laughs> yeah, these things don't happen often because, well, they don't happen because we have tools. We never leave home without our phone. Uh, an adventurer would never go into the woods without a compass. And these things, these tools, they help us find what we're looking for. They help us find the most important things in life. Well, you know, like Starbucks. But when it comes to work, 70% disengagement, only one out of 10 actually loving their job. How did those people find their way? Let me give you an example. October 1st, 2009 was my first day at the CPA firm. I walked in with a commitment to being a partner in 10 years. Now I knew I was gonna be committed because it took me five years to get a four year college degree so I knew I had it in me. But what ended up happening is I felt frustrated. I was getting frustrated and then I remembered back at school they said, Josh, auditing is going to be fun. <laughs> and it, they were lying to me. <laughs> and, and I was frustrated with my results and so I did the natural thing anybody would do. I started to work harder. I joined the gym. Now contractually this morning, I can't let you know which gym that was, but they're on this planet and they're all about fitness. <laughs> I went in earlier, I stayed later. I even auto-scheduled emails to go out at 11.30 p.m. I mean, what more could one do? That wasn't working, so I asked myself big questions. What's my purpose? What am I passionate about? One of the partners, Mark, he said to me, Josh, if you stay for seven years, you'll get to do some cool stuff. And Mark, I'm, tr I'm trying to make it to Friday at five. So here I was, lost, confused, frustrated with one thought keeping coming back in my mind, I hate my job. I hate my job. But my coworker, Jen, she had a different experience. One night, her and I are out, just her and me, late at a client. Boardroom, her, me. Jen makes a noise of immense satisfaction. And then I, uh, I look up at Jen, and well, Jen, she's, she's looking at me like this. And I think this is a good thing. And she leans in and she goes, Josh, I've got a tingly feeling, a tingly feeling. And I, so I really thought this was good for me. Uh, but then she said, I got a tingly feeling because the numbers matched. The thing, that's what you do as an auditor. The thing that stood out to me though, is two of us, the same job. Jen gets a tingly feeling when the numbers match. Me, I would get pissed. I did all this work and nothing changed. Two of us, same role, two totally different results. Fast forward a bunch of years now, I run the Engagement Institute. What we do is contextual model our research around the employee brain. What was happening in Jen was when she got the tingly feeling, her brain and her heart became connected. So I said, hmm, this is fascinating. Started to look deeper. When we experience a tingly feeling at work, what begins to happen is dopamine, oxytocin get released, flooded into our system. Excitement, reward, motivation, this is what drives people forward. So then I thought, well, could this tingly feeling be the thing that could give us some insight into our work? Could we maybe push performance management or employee engagement to the side? Fascinating. So what did I do? I took the employee brain and like anybody naturally would, 
we put it on a compass. But a compass is only good if you know which way is north. So we started asking questions, started digging deeper. And through this research, eight of these, what we call true north elements, rose to the surface. They gave us insight, direction, into what drives us, where our peak performance is, where we add the most value. And as we put all this together, we got so excited because then we thought, oh my God, we can find your tingly feeling. And so we put it on our website, we can find your tingly feeling. And then we immediately had to take it down because <laughs> the, the, the number of calls, no, not that type of tingly feeling. <laughs> Anyways, but it's also dangerous. It's dangerous because our real brains our real human brains can also enter a state of deprivation called hypoxia. And this deprivation of hypoxia happens when our brains don't have oxygen. And then I thought, what happens to our employee brain when we don't get that beautiful resource of doing work that matters? The tingly feeling unleashes an unfair advantage for humans at work. It opens up a new possibility for who we can become. So next time, Next time somebody seems a little frustrated, a little lost, maybe next time a high performer needs a new challenge, pull them into your office, sit them down, close the door, look them in the eyes and say, it's about time we talk about your tingly feeling. <laughs>
The thing I'm most concerned about typically is my major points and the transitions. How am I gonna go from this point to this point so that way it makes sense? How does everything stay connected back to point number one of what is the biggest outcome? Next, don't make this your one and only time to shine. Especially if you're speaking in front of your peers and you've got five, 10, 15 minutes, you don't need to wow them with everything that you've ever known. Part of preparation is keeping focused around that one point. And when you make this the opportunity to try and express everything, that brain will shut down, it will conserve calories, they gloss over. No, let this be the first opportunity for them to want to hear more from you. And then uh, lastly is this, shorter is better than longer. Somebody important once said, important, an important person, somebody who is important once said, sorry for the long letter. If I had more time, I would have wrote you, written you, writ you. I would have prepared you a shorter letter. <laughs> Point being, it's hard to distill it down. It's hard to keep it shorter. That's the whole point of this video was in five minutes, I was able to deliver a point that was compelling, that had humor, that had emotion, that was able to express something that somebody could tangibly use. And that takes preparation. That takes dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of reps. Now you may not have time to do that for a meeting, but these ideas right here, keeping it simple, having one driving point, realizing people want to conserve calories. I mean, we could get deeper into this stuff, but I think these pieces right here in terms of preparation for, for speaking, if you will, are going to make the difference for you. Have a great rest of your day, night, morning, whatever it is. And uh, I appreciate your time and your attention. And uh, hey, if there's something you want us to talk about, if there's some place you want us to go check out, let us know. And we'll go do it. Maybe a certain food group you want me to try? We'll do that too. See ya. If they want the drama, got the O's. Shit the whole crew to the cruise. Doing shit you don't even see in movies. Ride with me. Ride with me, boss. I got a hard head with her ass up. She want the last name with the ring on it. Cause I pulled out a million cash all up.